Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So this week for my bonus video, I wanted to try and describe each of the doctor's 13 faces in the simplest way possible, just in terms that would also encompass some of their notable personality traits. So this is gonna start with William Hartnell, but number one, the wizard. Hartnell described his doctor as something of a cross between the Wizard of Oz and Father Christmas. I guess you could make a joke about smoke and mirrors leading to unexpected gifts. Paul McGann described him as seeming very Victorian in his demeanor, but I just prefer to think of him as a wizard. I think it's just a little bit more fun. One of his most notable catchphrases was, Come along, my dear. His closest personal connection was to his granddaughter, Susan Foreman, but he had all the idiosyncrasies associated with old men. He had something of a mean streak in him and was deeply mistrustful of outsiders. But just like the Wizard of Oz, he eventually softened began to enjoy spending his time traveling with companions and did not want to go when it was his time to regenerate. Number two, the clown. If the first doctor had a Victorian personality, the second doctor swung to the other end of the spectrum. His catchphrase was, when I say run, run. He was every bit as clever and manipulative as the first doctor, but he would often play the fool to defeat enemies or just be plain funny. He also panicked a lot, despite being quite heroic at all times. I just like to think of the way he acted as a precursor to The Doctor Lies. The second Doctor is also really notable for playing the recorder and his love affair with hats, something that Matt Smith's Doctor took from quite a bit. Number three, The Scientist. The third Doctor was actually hired by UNIT as their science advisor, reluctantly, so he was very literally a scientist. During John Pertwee's run, they constructed a science lab standing set. The Doctor had been exiled by the Time Lords and had to look for a place on Earth to hunt. He even got a sweet car to drive. During one of the specials, the first doctor, when he met him, described him as a dandy just because of the extravagant costume. But the third doctor was far more physical than his previous incarnations. Like he became a karate master. During his run, he also became a master diplomat, mediating a lot of big disputes for the Time Lords. One of his most notable catchphrases though was, now listen to me. He could be very indignant at times. Number four, the Bohemian. He was a genuinely warm and funny doctor, if not just a little bit manic. I wouldn't say manic depressive, but he did have a much more cruel attitude towards the Time Lords. So he did get pretty dark at times. As the term implies, his costume and habits were very bohemian. He wandered more than any other doctor, which technically isn't fair because he did get more episodes than pretty much any other doctor. Despite his more whimsical catchphrase, have a jelly baby, he was a lot more aloof than previous doctors and given to brooding but I feel like he delivered some of the best monologues of Classic Who. He did still retain a lot of the physicality of the Third Doctor and even engaged in some expert sword play. I'm sure he would be just as good with the spoon. Number five, the pacifist. The Fifth Doctor was so against violence that it probably ended up getting him killed. He was definitely one of the most sensitive incarnations and dropped a lot of the eccentric behaviors of the Fourth Doctor. His biggest catchphrase was, sorry, mustache, but catchphrases in general weren't as prominent during his run. Like I said, dropping a lot of the eccentricities. Moffat himself explained the fifth doctor as being one of the most tortured. Maybe not quite as much as the ninth doctor, but Peter Davison conveyed a lot of the emotional problems that the doctor had in his performance, a lot of the internalized problems. His version of the doctor was one of the first boyish appearing ones, you know, very anachronistic to his extreme old age. Something that Matt Smith's doctor would take to an extreme. Number six, the egoist. It may have been a result of his troubled regeneration, but the sixth doctor had the worst mood swings of any of the doctors. He was wildly egotistic and at the same time compassionate. His most notable catchphrase was, I wonder, aha. Some of his personality came through in his costume. The wild colors were a good indicator of the changes in his moods. I would say of all the doctor's costumes, that was one of the most polarizing. Half of the fans feel like it was a total disaster and the other half completely love it. Number seven, the chess master. The seventh doctor brought back a lot of the silly behaviors of the second doctor as a way to misdirect people from his true intentions. He was generally one of the more curious, inquisitive and charming doctors and he was a consummate showman. One of his more notable catchphrases was not this time. He was a noted chess master, actually playing chess literally but his adventures became an allegory for a giant chess match against evil. And they actually even included a giant chessboard in this week's episode. Number eight, the romantic. The eighth doctor was one of the most passionate and one of the first to actually kiss his companion. 
He suffered something of an identity crisis post-regeneration, and his most notable catchphrase became, Who am I? Very appropriate. Because of his very short run on television, he did not get much time to develop his character, but the expanded material, like the novels and the audio dramas, totally picked up the slack, which is why everyone totally crapped their pants when he showed up in The Night of the Doctor. Number 9, The Warrior. This was the Dark Doctor. We only saw him at the very end of the Time War, so most of the supposed atrocities he committed in the name of the Time Lords are left to speculation. Maybe they'll do that sometime in the expanded material. But they're bad enough that all the newer Doctors, or the Doctors since then, refused to mention his name, at least until recently. His most notable catchphrase was, No More. There's a lot of interesting stories about the creation of this Doctor. Moffat said that he wrote John Hurt's Doctor thinking that the world had been robbed of this large period in the 90s when the show was off the air, but he also said it had a lot to do with the casting. During the story planning, he said he felt like the 8th Doctor, Paul McGann's Doctor, wouldn't have been the one to end the Time War. It just wasn't in his character's nature. And he was pretty certain that Christopher Eccleston was going to decline any invitation to come back. Thus, John Hurt was created as the secret Doctor, the one that no one had ever heard of. It's totally crazy to think that had Christopher Eccleston come back, he would have gotten that John Hurt storyline in the 50th anniversary. Like they would have had McGann regenerate into Eccleston, then have Eccleston detonate the moment, at least until they change things at the end of the episode. Number 10, The Survivor. The Ninth Doctor was, until recently, the last survivor of the Time War. Although Russell Davies retconned that story so that the Master and the Time Lords could come back, and then the 50th changed it all again. But he was like the PTSD Doctor, given to violent outbursts of joy and anger. His most notable catchphrase was, Fantastic. And he definitely had a crazy gleam in his eye. I know everyone is still totally hoping that someday Eccleston will relent and come back for a future anniversary special, because all the other recent Doctors seem like they're very happy to do the next one. Number 11, The Human. The 10th Doctor was by far one of the most human, even though the 8th Doctor started the whole half-human thing which I know some people view as blasphemy. Ten was just much more human in his emotional states and social habits. He was also one of the more romantically attached doctors. He even took the metaphor of being very human to a literal place when he burned a regeneration to create the Metacrisis Doctor, who went off to have his own set of adventures with Rose. He's very cheeky, but it all just seems like an act to hide this deep sea of anger and regret. Number 12, The Raggedy Man. Old man in a very young man's body. The Eleventh Doctor was by far the most anachronistic in his behavior and costuming, which might explain why he was so drawn to helping children, just because he was trying to seem like a child himself. He brought back a lot of the eccentric moods of the Sixth Doctor, did not include some of the more obnoxious egotistical qualities. His most notable catchphrase, of course, was, bow ties are cool. I do kind of feel like Matt Smith single-handedly made bow ties cool again in pop culture. As we learned in Deep Breath, he yearned for approval, as evidenced by his young face. And finally, number 13, The Alien. Peter Capaldi's 12th Doctor is still fresh out of the gates, so a lot of the finer qualities are still percolating, but he is thus far the most alien-seeming of all the Doctors. Alien in his mannerisms and social habits, that is. He still possesses a lot of the pageantry of the 11th and the 7th Doctors, with the hard edge of some of the other older Doctors. He's not quite as capricious as Matt Smith's Doctor, but he's still very early in his run. Give him time. I'm sure he'll have some bigger mood swings. Right now, he's mostly on the grumpier end of that. He doesn't officially have a catchphrase, but thus far, Shut Up is the leading candidate. Now it's your guys' turn. Big challenge. Try to describe as many of the doctors as you can using one or two words. My next video is going to be the q and I'll post that tomorrow, so still plenty of time to leave your questions and the giveaway is still open. If you're just finding me for the first time in this video, all you have to do to enter that is be a subscriber and leave a comment. My next bonus video is going to post after my episode 7 review next week, so feel free to leave me any suggestions about topics or things that you guys really want to talk about. Right now, click here to get the q and I'll add the annotation as soon as I post the video tomorrow, and click here for my episode 6 review. Thank you so much for watching. Now let's all high five and go rewatch episode six.